Hello, I'm Vincent. And I'm Andrew. And uh, we decided to have a face-off with our favourite uh, British Africa stamp items today because we can't decide which one is the coolest. Um, and so uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to get in first and see what, what people think. It's a little unfair because that's more than one stamp. <sighs> this is what I have to work with. <laughs> We have a piece of paper, and on it, some Transvaal stamps overprinted with VRI. But these are not the normal ones. The, this VRI was applied by the British when they occupied the Boer town of Lindenburg, L-Y-D-E-N, Berg. And they are very rare stamps. There's a whole book written on these stamps and very little is known about how they were used and how they were cancelled. So I'll put them on under the, uh, the camera. There we go. Now there are some normal Transvaal stamps on the piece of paper below that but I focused down on the first three rows and these stamps as I said before are incredibly rare. I'll give you an idea. The green stamps here there were 2,033 of those printed. This red stamp, the penny here, there was 1,010 printed. The big one, the threats surcharge on the penny, there were 2,400 printed. There's a tuppence, of which there are a couple, only 118 printed. So fourpence. There we go. Of which there were only 64 printed. Sixpence. Of which only 61 were printed. A shilling. Of which only 36 stamps ever existed. Now, the book on the subject of these stamps shows various pieces postmarked with this councillor and postmarked with this councillor. These are postmarked on different dates. The experts never realised that they were cancelled on the same paper with postmarks from different brigades. The stamps on this piece of paper are catalogued just as used over £12,000. And this item sheds a whole new light on how they were treated at the time when the British first got into town, created the stamps, started sending mail and postmarking them for their own reasons. So I think that is a very cool item. It may be one of the most important discoveries of British Africa philately in recent years. Or at least that's my opinion. Let's see what Andy's got. Well, I feel better now because even though know, you have a lot of stamps, my single stamp is actually catalogued more than all those put together. Niger Coast, one of the provisional surcharges from 1893. This is the halfpenny on the one penny lilac with a dividing bar diagonally these were normally cut in half and used on covers now this is an unsevered pair now what's unusual about this is it's the violet ink which was only used at the top of the sheet mm. and there's hardly any remaining ones around still this is a lovely corner example we're going to stick it under the glass right. now this stamp catalogues 16,000 pounds and it's a gorgeous example. It's got a part of an old Calabar postmark there. Okay. It's, incre it it's an incredibly rare survivor. You can see that the half in violet on each side of the stamp yep. there with the dividing line. There we go. It and may well be unique because only that row exists anyway. Yeah, I think there were 12 yeah, in, yeah, but to uh, get, on the top row. To get a corner example like that, find another. Yes, you can't, because there's only one. Yeah, we, we, we 
did look into this, didn't we? We couldn't find a record of another intact one, although they're not sure whether another intact pair exists. Yeah. Uh, they are catalogued cut in half, and they're very valuable. Anyone familiar with these stamps will see that they, they're not, they've probably not seen that colour of surcharge, and that's because they just changed their mind because it blended in with the underlying yeah. stamp too much, and they did the second row onwards in a different colour. I still don't think it's as good as uh, my <laughs> item, though. <laughs> anyway, let's find out what these guys think. Thank you. Bye.